Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Two Chicks and a Horror Flick. I am Felicia Connor. And I am Tawny Ray. And we are super excited to be here with you tonight um, talking about poltergeist. So something we never start with that I'm going to start with now is spoiler alert. <laughs> if you if you haven't heard before, our um our episodes, sorry, our episodes are total spoiler alerts. We want to talk about everything and anything that we want. So if you haven't seen it, go see it, then meet us back here and uh, it'd be super exciting to talk about it. And also we have a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group for all of us horror loving fans to get together and talk about the movies. You could share your, um, your faves, you could share your reviews and we can just all connect and we're super excited about that. And that is two chicks and a horror flick on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Yes, and let me start off this episode by celebrating again because we hit 50 downloads. <laughs> ah, 50 downloads. We are so excited and like we're so honored and happy and excited that you guys are digging it and that you're listening. That's because we love doing this. We absolutely love it. So, yeah, we're only like what five episodes in or something, and we're yeah. like so stoked to be doing it. And I, I think I told Felicia this. Well, I've been telling everybody this, but I'm like, but I'm like, there's like at least five strangers listening to us. Like, yeah. for sure. like, I feel like I've got like five ride or die friends who are listening to the episodes. You've probably got your own like five friends. That means like, there's got to be at least five people, right? Who just yeah. like, have never met us who are listening, which is. It's so insane. cool. And we keep getting more and more followers on Instagram. I'm even excited about that. We have like, what, what was it? 90? Yeah, I think it's like 94 or something last That's time I looked. That's so fun. I 97. Know, like, it's 97 now. And oh. people are probably like, okay, you need like thousands. I'm stoked to have 97 people that want to follow the stuff that we're doing. It's so cool. Me too. So cheers to that. 50 downloads. Cheers. 97 to followers. That. <laughs> that brings up, what are you drinking, Tawny? Tawny Ray? I I'm drinking the same thing that I was drinking last time, which is just um, Aberfeldy. I think I called it bourbon last time, but it's not bourbon. It is whiskey. It's like scotch malt whiskey. I don't know. It's got a long name. It's good. I'm yes. drinking that with a little bit of Coke. The tiniest can of Coke you've ever seen in your life. Look at how small this is. Oh, that's cute. It's like a little mini can. And <laughs> I'm only going to drink probably like half of it still. You drink the Coke and then the whiskey and then the Coke and then the whiskey? Yeah, I kind of like, well, you know, it's like I sip on the whiskey and then I take a couple sips of the um, Coke. I didn't say this last time and I should have. I was drinking Trulies for our first few episodes and ended up burping every like 20 <laughs> seconds. And so Felicia had to edit all that out. So now I'm drinking non-carbonated <laughs> beverages from here on out. I felt burpy last time with the beer. So I mm. do the same thing you do, but I do it with um, water. And I have my handy dandy cup that I wrote abundance and compassion on because oh, I learned in this thing that, and I, I kind of heard this before, but didn't really think about it, that words, you can, they change the molecular structure of water, like legit Google it. It's true. So she was like, write words on your cup. So I grabbed this cup, which is actually my husband's cup because it's like his work cup, but it's mine yeah. now. And... <laughs> um. A dirty martini with six, six uh, blue cheese stuffed olives. Wow. That's so many olives. <laughs> it is. I love those olives though. <laughs> um, All right. What else? Yeah. Do we have anything else to say right before we start talking about Poltergeist? I don't think so. Not, not that I can think of. I do have one thing to say. <laughs> I just came to Go. my mind. Um, so this movie or movies that we're watching that are older and we're going to have to take that into consideration of, because like, I watched it with my teens and um, maybe it didn't scare them as much because of the effects that they're used to now. Uh, but I remember when I was little, I was really scared. So when I was watching it and some, like we, we would take that into consideration, right? The, the yes. era. Okay, cool. 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 I just want to make sure. Yes. I will um, also talk about that. Okay. Okay, cool. And yeah this movie there is so much to talk about I 
I literally spent like three hours today doing the research on it. And I, I, I was like, it's endless. Like it's an endless, like, I shouldn't say pit, but it's just like, there's so much to talk about with this movie oh, wow. that I eventually just had to be like, okay, that's enough for now. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, and so I wish I would have, I wanted to look up more about like how they kind of did things, but I just, I petered out on the research at some point. So yeah. Oh, that makes sense. All right, cool. Let's dig in. So because uh, this was your pick. Yes. Did you go first last time? You kind of did, but... Oh, we should do a little synopsis. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you want me to look one up real quick? I want... Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah let's do... I, yeah. I tried to look it up, but it didn't, like... I figured since we're already spoiling, we should just go through, like, what happens in the entire movie. Do you oh, want to yeah. try to... Do you want to try to off the cuff give a quick synopsis? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yes, I will do this. Don't hate me, guys. But... So there's this family and they live in this neighborhood, this new construction neighborhood. The The dad is like the top salesman for that particular building company. I think that's something to do with it. That's why I'm, I mentioned it. So he sold a ton of homes in there and they live in this home. And they, the first thing is um, uh, Carrie Ann, which is their little girl, seems to have a connection with these spirits and you can hear them talking through the snow on the TV. So when the TV channel goes offline, back in the day that used to happen, there's a TV channel and it would go offline and there would be snow. Um, and they speak to her through that. And then they, the family starts to experience all this different paranormal activity within the house. Um, and it just gets more and more and more. And then eventually those spirits start, they take the little girl they take her into this other dimension or world or wherever those spirits are. And the family hires these paranormal activity people and they're trying to contact Carrie Ann and ultimately bring her home. Um, they do get to bring her home. The mom goes into this other dimension to bring her back home. And, um, but even though they have her back home and they think everything is fine and the house is cleansed, that energy is still in the house because this whole community was built on this um, burial ground. And so what happened was the, the main builder guy, he said that he moved the graveyard, but he only moved the headstones sicko and left all the bodies there. <laughs> right. So they, they're pissed off. And then the family drives out into the night and gets out of that neighborhood. And there's many, I've seen all of them. Okay. So I won't mention anything else because you get to know a little bit more about all that stuff. <laughs> I didn't look up really much. I came across some information while I was just doing research on some of the other, the sequels, but I don't know. I haven't seen, it, it was like, I had seen this movie, right? Like I, I hadn't ever sat down to watch the entire movie all in one time, but like I had caught enough like clips and snippets from other things that I kind of it was one of those movies that I felt like I had already watched I just had never like sat down to watch the entire thing all at once if that makes sense yeah yeah and that famous quote there here yeah I probably heard that a lot all right Tawny so that's the synopsis there you go okay so then I'll jump into kind of some of the just like information so it was made in 1982 the director was Toby Hooper I'm just going to butcher names probably the whole way through. <clears throat> and it was I a think Steven Spielberg movie. Steven Spielberg wrote it. Oh, or, oh, or is credited with writing it in addition to other people. I think there was more people on the writing team probably, but he also, there's like a big controversy about who actually directed the movie, whether it was Steven Spielberg or Toby Hooper. So it seems like there's like, it's, it's contested. Like, he was in an interview once, Steven Spielberg, and he mentioned something about, like, oh, Toby Hooper is not really, like, a take charge kind of guy. So, like, you know, but that seemed to, like, be kind of rude. So then he went back on that and sent him a letter that was, like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take anything away from the fact that you directed this movie. Like, you did a fantastic job, blah, 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 whatever. So he kind of apologized for that. But I also read something, and I don't know how true this is necessarily, but it was, like, some people, someone said that, because he was, he did this movie and E.T. back to back, mm. um, almost like seemingly parts of it concurrently. And there was something about him being in contract for directing E.T. So he couldn't like technically direct 
poltergeist because it was like did, oh. it had something to do with like it was gonna be a problem with his contract again I don't know if that's true or not but it seems like it was kind of a tag team situation it seemed like it was both even though Toby Hooper is the one credited for directing gotcha okay okay and that's just the tip of the iceberg I didn't even write anything about that in the notes (laughs) all right let's that's awesome I love that background let's talk about the movie who's did yes did you start or I started who wants to talk about what they thought of it first since it was my pick it should be you actually okay because last time I think I had you go first because I didn't love Invisible Man and I didn't want to shit all over it before you had a chance to talk about it so I can go first um and also just for like I put it in here to be um professional (laughs) but the people in this movie mainly are Craig T. Nelson, Joe Beth Williams, Dominique Dunn, Heather O'Rourke, Oliver Robbins who's the boy little boy and um I put an honorable mention in here Zelda Rubenstein who is my personal favorite of the the entire movie um so I'm going to say the same thing that I'm going to say for like 90% of movies that I watch probably ever, which is that I didn't love it, but I also didn't hate it. It, but I would say overall, not my fave. Like it was oh. just, and I, and I think it's because there is a, there is a thing for me where it's like, if it's, if it's, people are going to hate me for saying this, but I'm just going to say it because it's it. the truth. There's like, there's some, there's a set of movies that I feel like sometimes are just too old for me. And it's like, just because there's not a level of nostalgia, you know, like I love Child's Play. It's like one of my favorite movies and I have a lot of nostalgia tied up in it. And when I watch it, I'm like, this is a great fucking movie. But I'm sure that people would watch that movie, even just born six, seven years after me they would watch that movie and be like, this is garbage. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so I feel like that. And I did try to take into consideration, like this was older. The effects sometimes are very rough. Like, and so there were, there, there was some really good moments I felt like, and some moments that I didn't like. So I'll start with the good. Um, unless you want to jump in here. Um, no, I was just going to say, and then let's talk about all the moments. I, um, I like your description because I, I love this movie. I I would say I really like this movie, but I think there's a lot of nostalgia in it for me. I saw it when I was a kid and it terrified me and, uh, and I, I watched them all and it was, it was creepy and I really love, I do love this movie, but I think that's a perfect way to explain it there. I was excited to watch it because I remember that and and I, I thought the acting was holy shit. The mom and the dad, I thought were freaking great. The sister, even the little boy, I thought the actors were really good. Even rewatching it. Even rewatching it. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't remember what I thought way back then. Even rewatching it, um, I really liked their acting, especially the mom. I cried last night when she was so stressed out about her baby and wanting her home I had that emotional reaction so anyway that was my I I really liked it okay I was gonna say like and again I'm sure people are gonna be like pissed this is like I feel like this is like horror blasphemy for me to like say anything negative about this movie because it's so iconic and it has it, it it paved the way I feel like for a lot of other things and <clears throat> there's no contesting that but it, it, I did feel like the acting across the board was rough for me. Like, I was really? like, I was like, man, there must have just been at some point. This is going to sound st- stupid. I don't even know. This might be wrong. Or maybe there's a phenomenon like this out there that I just don't know what the name of it is. But it feels like we've just come such a long way. Like, and now when you watch people act and you're like, damn, those people are good actors. You get so completely sucked into the movie And there's no thought that you're even watching a movie anymore. I didn't ever feel that watching this movie. And it's because, like, a lot of the acting is way over the top, which I just have a hard time with. I like subtlety. I like for it to be... I'm a fan of subtlety, and I'm a fan of slow progressions 
to where we need to go instead of like overnight type stuff. So like one of the things that I didn't love about this movie was like, it felt like it happened so fast. It was like, it was like, oh, there's kind of some creepy stuff happening. And, th- and then it was like that night, the boy gets eaten by the tree. She re- like disappears into the closet. Like it's just total like, whoa. And I kind of like a little bit of a easing into it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is creepy. Like, oh, this is like really creepy. And then I'm like, oh no, it's like too far gone. And I just felt like it, it snapped into the, like, oh shit, everything's crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I can kind of just go through some of my yeah. moments. So I put <laughs> under the good, I put some graphics. <laughs> Um, the skull coming out of the closet and the, like, monster in front of the door. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the end where the house implodes are all... Yeah. I was, like, fantastic. Very good stuff. And I think most of the practical effects I really liked, and they hold up, right, because they're practical. Um, just like the implosion scene. Actually, I have a little tidbit later that I'll talk about. Um, how they made it but I liked all of that stuff but even the like ghost in front of the door that wasn't practical and it looked maybe there were some practical elements I'm not sure I'd have to go back and look at it again or do some more research again I tried to do I was like gonna do research on the graphics and and the effects and stuff but I didn't get a chance but um what do you mean when you say practical elements oh okay so what I mean is I just realized that my mic was turned down, so I turned it up a little bit. Um, When I say practical, I mean physical things that they build as opposed to doing it digitally. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, The Thing, the movie The Thing is, like, widely renowned as, like, a fantastic movie because I think they did all all practical effects. Um, And when you do it in in a real way, it, like, holds up better, right? Because if we look at movies, like, that was made that were made five years ago and the um motion graphics and the like you know cgi and everything it looks like garbage because our our technology moves so fast yeah so the the digital parts of this movie were rough like the bad part of the graphics (laughs) that fucking tornado that comes in (laughs) oh my gosh the tornado was I was like so ridiculous like they shouldn't have even put that tornado in there I know <laughs> it was so bad I agree cut it cut it I mean that whole scene to me was like and there's like a tree that like I don't I just was like you could have cut it out and it would have helped the movie because it was like yeah because I know the tree like what were they chalking it up to uh the tree uh, didn't really eat the boy were they trying to make it like so people would think oh the tree isn't possessed it was because there was a tornado or was the tornado just getting rid of the tree like the tree was enough with the storm like they didn't need to have that tornado going through that black tornado <laughs> I I could be wrong about this but I did feel yeah it was like dark purple <laughs> just a 2d like they're like is that a tornado <laughs> Yeah, it was bad. I agree with you. <laughs> oh, okay, but again, you know, how do you do a practical tornado? I don't know. There's probably ways, but it was probably not. Maybe um, no cheap. tornado. We didn't need a tornado. Yeah, I, we could have done without that scene entirely. Yeah. But, um, not the tree scene. You're talking about the tree scene? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So I yeah. I loved that tree scene. Well, Him getting eaten is, by it? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's like a... um. I get that that, like the graphics of it right now, looking back, but I remember when it came out and I saw it and I was terrified of it, of that tree pulling him out of his bed and eating him. Like those, those are like the, the things I remember the most, that tree, that clown under the bed and, um, the, the closet, but the closet at the end with that big, like worm. Thing. Yeah. And I remember, and the thing in front of the door, I do remember that too. And how much that scared me. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at it now, seeing the tree with like, if, if this movie was made now and seeing that tree, I would have thought like, oh, okay. 
but like back then I, that was really scary to me. Yeah. I totally get that. And I think I saw a lot of comments of people. Cause sometimes what I like to do is I like to just go read and see like what other people, just regular people commenting on how they liked the movie to see what they thought. Um, and a lot of people who watched this as a kid, I feel like walked away with that scene being like burned into their mind. But I just felt like the treat, like I felt like the whole scene served as like a very shallow thing to A, get the whole family out of the house so that the girl could get swallowed up by the closet. And B, like to you, exactly to your point, I feel like they were, they had this like weird thing going on where they were like, oh, the first time something happened when the bed shook, they were like, it was an earthquake <laughs> and then this and then the tree gets like uprooted by the tornado and they're like well we might have a poltergeist but like it could also just be like natural disasters so probably not but like <laughs> we we're already sold as the viewer like oh some paranormal shit is happening like we don't there's no like oh maybe not <laughs> you know what I, and yeah it's, it's again the same thing where there's like not enough subtlety for me to like buy that like, I'm just like, obviously. I thought the tree, I thought that's exactly what the tree was doing, was getting everybody out of the house so that th they could steal the girl. Mm, okay. Yeah. I thought. You're but right. I, I do see what, I do see what you're saying though. And if anybody can hear my dog barking, I'm sorry. It's like, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay. Yeah. But I, I can, I can totally see that. Yeah, no, but you're right. It could be um, pulling them out. Because that was the other thing, too, is, like, most of what happens happens in the house, and it has to do with, like, objects in the house. So to, like, have the tree, I just was like, I don't know, it seems weird because it's, like, out there versus in the home. But whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see what you're saying, though. I see what I you're see saying. It's kind of like a, a random side, like, why is this tree eating this boy? Yeah. Like, I can see that. I can see that. Or maybe also just playing my own devil's advocate here maybe the house knows what scares these kids and uses the tree against the little boy because obviously he's scared of the tree maybe mm -hmm. I'll make up that reason um so some other stuff that I really liked uh as far as like creepy moments went there were some moments that I did appreciate and that were subtle and very creepy when she's in the kitchen and she like turns her back and looks back and the chairs are stacked it gave me chills like I usually don't get chills while I watch movies but I did have a like ooh, just hair raising ooh, that is oh because it's it's so fast and they what they did is they ha I think I might have a thing later so I'll give you more detail if I miss something but they actually had a crew that that was one take they like pan away from the the kitchen and they have the crew come in in like seven seconds and like take out the old ones and they come in with like a pyramid of chairs that they had already built and just like place it up on the table oh that's so money and you can actually see in the like toaster uh there's like a chrome toaster or something in the in the shot you can see them like moving around you can see their like reflections <gasps> as they're doing it Shut up. I got to look at that. I love stuff like that. Okay, cool. But it's so, but they do such a good job and it's so fast and so quiet. I mean, obviously they might have replaced the audio later and if they grabbed it, but I, it was so well done, you know? So like, I really liked that moment. I also love the moment. It's like right before this where she comes back again, it's in the kitchen for whatever reason, the kitchen area is my most favorite creepy part but she comes back and the chairs are all pulled out. It's before the, the stacking scene. And she's like standing there looking at it and you're trying to get a grip as a viewer, like what's happening. And then the little girl's hand grabs her shirt from behind. Do you remember this? Yeah, yes, I do. That got me. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Like, I was not expecting her to sneak up on that. Were there any other um, super creepy moments that you loved? I love it. And again, so sorry. I feel like all the neighborhood dogs, I feel like maybe there's like a 101 Dalmatian issue going on and like they're all communicating to each other. <laughs> you remember that? That's what's happening in, in, in my neighborhood right now because we're recording. Um, yes, I love that scene when you turned around and all the tables were there. So here's one thing about the acting. So I loved 
I thought the acting was really good. Like I dug it because the mom, I, okay. I loved the acting up until that woman came in and cleansed the house. And then all those fucking people feel it's okay to get naked and take baths in that house to go to sleep. The kids are in the room. They're in the room where they almost got sucked. Well, not almost. They got sucked into another dimension. Oh, but the house is clean. The, the, the lady that came in said, this house has been cleansed. And so the mom is like, cool, let me dye my hair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was, that was weird. If I was in, if, if that happened in my house, I would be gone 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 to a hotel no it's cool it's cleansed now all right cool everyone's back to normal okay you had to jump into another dimension into this slime covered dimension you came back with your child a tree almost ate your son like chaos oh we're cool now I'm gonna color my hair because I don't like this gray and then she's like um I did like the scene when she was in the bed and the demon had her um but It irritated me beyond all level that her children were still in that room where they were kidnapped to another dimension and tortured. And first of all, no human child would ever go in that room again, Yeah, ever. So that's where I'm obviously getting riled. (laughs) I loved everything because I thought her reactions were great. I loved that she saw the chairs and went, shit, we're possessed. There was no... Oh, honey, you did that. I'm sure you did. I don't know how, but I'm sure you did. You know what I mean? There was none of that bullshit. It was like legit, holy shit, we're possessed. She grabs her husband. It was so funny because my two, my two teens, the teens, they watched it with me, my daughter and her girlfriend. And um, they were like, oh my gosh, Felicia, you're totally that woman. (laughs) <laughs> because of her yeah. passion and obsession with like and then she has her kids sliding across the floor and then she grabs her husband and she's like watch this and his his kind of agitation like what are you doing is totally my husband so I like enjoyed that they were fully bought into something's wrong um it didn't take a lot of convincing I do agree though that it it happened all so fast it was like my kid slides across the floor with a football helmet and now shit is break is like all everything has come down around them. That was a huge, you know, leap and advancement super fast. Um, but anyways, I'm like, I'm digressing. Um, so anyways, I love the acting until that, because then I was like, this is so unbelievable that this family would still be in this house. And the husband's like, honey, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to go to work. I know. Have, <laughs> just relax in this home that almost killed all of us. Like, come on. I know that part was crazy. And um, so Jade watched it with me reluctantly. Like he tried to like leave. And I was like, I was like, wait, you're not going to finish this movie with me. And he like sat back down <clears throat> at the end of the movie. He was like, I, I hated that movie. <laughs> oh no. And he like went on and on. But one of his things was to at the very end, he was like, oh, so you're just going to stay in your own house after this like major thing happened. And you're going to go dye your hair in the bathtub. Also, No one dyes their hair in the bathtub. Who does that? Nobody. And I was like, is this the most 80s scene you've ever seen in your entire life? Like she turns on the light switch and it's red. Like they put a red bulb in there. And then, you know, there's like this insanely ridiculous (laughs) vanity. Like I was just like, oh God, I just went into a time portal or something. But my teens went, why is that light red? And I'm like, I don't know. Some bathrooms have heat lights and they're red. Like I was trying so hard to like hang on to, 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 to keep it cool. That's- yeah, because no, I color my hair. I have gray here. I have gray in here. My children suck the minerals out of me and I love them. They're worth it. They're totally worth it. Um, and one day I'll go completely gray, but uh, you don't, you don't put color in your hair and sit in a bath. I mean, I guess if you're going to sit in the bath and then get into the, sh- then get into the shower after, but I don't know. I, you asked me the elements I loved. I did love the acting. Um, I loved the characters. I one of the best actors was that dog. <laughs> yes, awesome. you're right about that. What? We were like, who is who's the <laughs> dog handler for this situation? This dog, although, and then it's like they got to give him a dumb name. E Buzz. 
Also, by the way, I had to keep the on like the subtitles through like ninety percent of this movie because I had such a hard time because it was so loud and so quiet. So quiet. I had it all the way up to like sixty. Yeah. We turned it all the way up too, and then it would be like way too loud because there was just like a lot of screaming all the way through the movie. And so like I just had to turn on the subtitles and turn it down. But I was like, Ebuzz? Like what a weird and that was another thing I meant to look up. Like I wanted to know what the name was from or based on but not enough research time apparently to find that out but yes that dog did a phenomenal job and it was cool yes and I agree that end part but let me just say this Zelda Rubenstein saved this movie for me like I fucking love that lady was she the the small lady she's the uh medium yeah the medium right okay Tangina I think is her name in the um she was great they say it like i think they say her name like once or something pretty quietly so i went and like tried to listen to it because i can't help but read it as tangina because i'm a child (laughs) yeah she was i loved her i did love her no nonsense bullshit like i did i i I really loved her character i love how she clashed a little bit with the husband like me too was like but but on the other hand you would think if that shit was going on, you would be cool with anybody. Exactly. That was one of the things that I had a problem with acting wise is like, it almost felt to me, it felt to me like there were some major like loose ends, right? Like what you're talking about, like there, she's like, oh, I'm dying my hair. And now I'm in the bathtub. Like, it's almost like they were like, oh, we forgot that she was dying her hair. And so now she just has to be in the bathtub, I guess, give her like a towel to wrap around her head so that it doesn't look like Maybe she washed her hair and then got in the bathtub. Like, why is anybody getting naked in this possessed house? Yeah, just leave. Just leave, leave, leave. Just leave or be fully clothed in case you have to run out. I don't know. It just seems like, I don't know. When I see being naked is like the ultimate vulnerability. And you just went through all of that. And you're, you know, I don't know. I don't mind that she was... I. Yeah, she wasn't even naked in the scenes. Like that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me that she was in her underwear or anything like that. I don't care about that. Like not, as a not person a watching a movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was more the fact that that's being ultimately vulnerable in this house that almost killed your whole family. Right. Yeah. Totally. I get that. And but like, here's my problem with the dad. I felt like they almost shot these scenes, like, which is normal to shoot it out of order. Like, the, but I felt like they shot the scenes with um, the medium coming in, Tangina, first. And then shot the rest of the stuff later. And I don't know if this, there's any truth to that, but it felt like he was like not on board, right? Like he was mm-hmm. like, he was like, this is, what he, he made some like weird ass like thing that I didn't even catch. He was like, where'd you get this one? The Knott's Fruit Farm or like the- Oh yeah, the, Knott's Berry Farm or like- Berry stuff, Farm. Like so a I, carnival or something. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what he was like getting at there, but I was like, but I was like, bro, your fucking daughter is like gone and you're so in on, like he's bought in by that point. So then to bring in a medium and not believe a medium, wouldn't you be like, wouldn't you be just be like, oh, anybody, somebody, please come help. I'll believe anybody. I've been talking to my daughter through the fucking TV. Like, (laughs) you know, like, anybody anybody that thinks they can help you are welcome in my home why would you why it was weird and so that was like one of those you know and maybe that's more I mean it it is more of like probably a direction choice like but I just there was a lot of loose ends that felt like it was they weren't tied up you know and it was just like weird can we please talk about why does anybody have that clown toy in their Mm. house like that toy and sitting there okay so I want to know like I don't do this when I tuck my my child in tuck her in find the scariest doll she has and place a chair at the foot of her bed yes and put the with the scary toy watching her at the foot of the bed there's nothing else if you think about it it's not like the room was trashed with toys I get that because that's my kid's room right now it's (laughs) super clean there is a chair and there was a clown. <laughs> yes. Staring at the boy specifically. Constantly. I loved that little boy though, but yeah. <laughs> See, again, I'm like, this little boy is not, 
acting well for me. One really? of the moments, okay, here, I'm going to skip to a section that I have yeah, that's please. called laughable moments. <laughs> Here's the first one. When they shoot, when they bring the entire team in and they're shooting, you know, and then they, they capture the like spirits coming down the stairs and whatever. The little boy goes, is that our house? <laughs> Jane and I fucking lost it. Obviously, it's your house. You've been in your house with these people and they've been shooting in your house. It's it's a <laughs> shot of your stairs. Of course it's your house again. It's a line <laughs> issue. They could have had him say something else, you know what I mean? But it was just like <laughs> Jade was like, this kid's a fucking idiot. That's a good point. So hard. that's a good like, point. Yeah, and he just, I, I just felt like they, I, I feel like the little girl, Carol Ann, um, Heather O'Rourke, did a pretty good job. She, she seemed genuinely frightened or in shock, like a lot of the time, which mm-hmm. I felt like I could buy. the The little boy was just like, I don't know, he just was weird and did weird stuff. How did you feel about the mom? She did. She did all right too. I think I in- felt she was really like literally. I I didn't cry when I first saw it. Obviously, I wasn't a mom, but there was one scene. Uh, I think it was when the first time she called her, and oh yeah, and she was saying that darkness was there, and I know what that darkness is, by the way. But you have to watch the other ones. Um, <laughs> that that darkness was there and taking her and the panic, like get away from my baby. As a mom, I. I did. I like teared up like that. I don't know. I I really liked her until she started coloring her hair. But other than that, there were, there were moments that I felt like she did a good job, but I do feel like, again, overall, there was like a weird acting choice where it just, that everyone was so like emphatic and over the top sometimes that it just totally pulled me out. Like if I watched one more person start to walk up to something and then like run start to run but like not really and then eventually run like if I saw that one more time in this movie I was about to die because I was just like over it I was like I and I again I think it's like a pace thing like now I'm used to movies that just go like it's just everything's moving and you know like I think that's part of my problem with this is just that like (laughs) But I swear to God, if I watched one more person, they, they were like, they were like, uh, 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 uh but not uh, the uh, one, uh, uh, I was like, the, not the hallway, not the hallway scene though. Right. Because no, that, that was, was great. Perps- okay. Well, how about her. when the husband comes home, yes. shit is all like, yes. it's just screwed. His whole family's in there and he goes to the front of the house and he's like, that's stops. exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly no. what I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he he has like a- (laughs) Get in the house! (laughs) That was my second laughable moment, was just the hysterical screaming at the end of the movie. Like, just everybody's screaming, especially the husband. Again, this is the perfect- (laughs) I was gonna say the teenage girl. Oh my God. (laughs) Except I thought they did a good job. So the car, and she's just standing outside of the car- what is happening? What is happening? Like, she's just screaming, right? But I liked the element of the little boy going, just go, just go, like, just leave her, like, just go, because that's what I was thinking. Just go. Just go. (laughs) See, I missed that part because I was laughing over it because it was so (laughs) insane. Like, because it is sort of like, he gets there and this is exactly what I'm talking about. He gets there. He's like, what? Oh, huh? What is it? What is it? Oh no! Eh. No! Or whatever he screams, but you're like, you just wasted like 45 seconds. Just run into the house, like. Go you- save your family, dude. Obviously, there's something wrong, and you know it, and you've been watching it for like weeks. Just get in there, like it was just driving me nuts. And then from that point forward, just everybody's hysterical. It's just like. And again, like, I get it, kind of, like, I, I, they're supposed to be scared. There's graves coming out of the fucking ground <laughs> like in front of them, you know, That's but I was true. just like, like, how would we react if that happened? Maybe I would stand in front of my parents' car and go, ah, 
But I feel like I would get in the fucking car and go drive, dad, drive, 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 drive. Like, you know what I mean? But maybe yeah. I wouldn't. Maybe I would stay on there and scream. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I lost it. The end was too much for me. And, and then when she gets out of the car and just starts screaming, that was the, I, like, I just, I couldn't take it. I laughed my ass off. I was like, what is <laughs> happening? Just get out of there. Just go. And then I didn't even catch her getting in the car. We were like, cause we were dying. We were laughing and laughing and you know, I can't help but close my eyes when I'm laughing. And then I was like, did they even get her? Did they get the daughter? Like- well, that's not clear. I think they did, but they don't show her getting in. I okay. did love the little boy going, just go, just go, just go. I thought that was cute and realistic because yeah. I was feeling the same thing. Just go. But of course I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave my teenage daughter, but I'd probably jump out, open the door and shove her ass in. Yes, and go. Get in. Right? I wouldn't leave my girl there, but yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. T- so the end totally, I just lost it laughing. Cause it was like too much just in the, like the scene where he's trying to get the keys killing me. And Jade's like, Oh, in the car. Yes, like, like trying to turn on the car. Right. Well, it's like, no, he doesn't even get in the car yet. And he's like, he's like trying to get into his pocket. He's like, <laughs> like, he's never gotten into a pocket before. I'm like, just put your fucking hand in your pocket. What in the fuck? So, and then, you know what? Gets- my teenage daughter actually said, my, my girls said that they're like, why is there a butt shot of him trying to get into his pockets? Like they call yeah. that out. Like, what's the point of that? But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. But he's just, <laughs> he's just fumbling with it. It's like ridiculous. And then he, they get to the motel and Jade's like, somebody get this motherfucker key ring. Like, cause he can't, he's has to go back in and pull out like one single key. <laughs> That's killed me. But, um, going back to great moments uh I really enjoyed the tv flickering effect I felt like that was ultra scary and like just held up it held up super well it was super creepy it it lent this really nice like element to where like they were moving around in the light it looked really jittery but it wasn't like overproduced like you know like I feel like again I haven't seen this movie Jacob's Ladder but my understanding is Jacob's Ladder sort of begun this like jittery look and um I just feel like maybe this was the precursor to that but like it's like practical and very good and it holds up are you adding that to the list I am how could you tell oh because you could see my eyes divert yes is that a (laughs) horror movie though I didn't I think so Jacob's Ladder I don't know I mean I haven't seen it so I don't know I've seen it and I'd love to re-see it I saw it when it first came out if you haven't seen it yeah, I'm adding it. Whatever. Okay. You can watch it. Like, it's not like yeah. people only watch. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and also, I'm going back because you were like, I didn't like the acting. Uh, I started not liking the acting when Zelda Rubenstein came in. I just, this woman, she just does it for me. I don't, she's like, I don't know why, but in my mind, even as a kid, this woman is a horror icon. Like, mm. I, I don't even think she's really been in that many movies. I looked it up. And I, cause I was like, certainly there's more than Poltergeist. I think she was in Poltergeist one and two. Yeah. Maybe three. I've seen her in those ones. Yeah. And she also was in this good movie that I have seen that maybe we should add to the list, but it's pretty like, it's pretty not, not well known, but it's called Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Behind the Mask. Okay. And so she's in there and I remember seeing her in that movie and just getting like hyped. Like I was just like, yes, I love this lady. Like she is the coolest. It's just her voice and like her entire monologue to the family. I, I loved it. Like I bought her whole thing way more than I bought anybody else's. I was like, she's in it to win it. I really love her. And it's just weird. I don't know how she became so prominent in my mind, but she did. I, I, lo- I love her too. And I agree with everything you're saying. The one thing about the monologue, it was, I was confused with how she was explaining the difference between a poltergeist and a, no, a haunting and a poltergeist, right? Those were the two things that she would remember. She was explaining the difference. Was of, she? Uh, yeah, she did. She, um, I no, thought the lady did at first. Maybe it wasn't her. Sorry. I, okay. Yeah. I so think that it was the lady, first lady when she was explaining. Sorry, yes, okay, love that la- the other lady that you were talking about. I love her; she's great. And I digress to this other lady, who is explaining the poltergeist and the haunting. And I felt like 
the family more aligned with the haunting yeah description however the movie's called poltergeist it was weird <laughs> yeah again it's like one of those like loose ends like it's I was sitting like, there like wait a second they haunted or it's a poltergeist but it's called poltergeist so <laughs> yeah I, I read that it was one of the trivia things it was like in the description <laughs> it was like in the description for a haunting versus the poltergeist she says that they have a poltergeist, but really it more aligns with the haunting. It sounded like her haunting description. Yeah. So let's talk about, uh, like, I another scene I remember very clearly in my mind is when the guy is eating, and then when he stops, it's covered in maggots. I remember that was so gross. So I really liked all of that. But then unfortunately, but not unfortunately, I think maybe back in the day it was scary. But nowadays, when he went in and his face was coming apart, um it was so clearly right like it was so clearly a, a dummy yeah um so that was hard to wrap your mind around but i remember when i was a kid though i don't I was seeing that movie cuz let's see it came out in what was it 82 82 so i was i was born in 77 so 879 80 81 82 okay it's 5 is what? that right say it again you were 5 was I five when I watched that movie oh good let me try to do this yeah. <laughs> I can't we do talk, it in my head we talked about math already so <laughs> <the> morning, I, <laughs> oh gosh when I was editing our episode just a side note on geography I was embarrassed I almost wanted to edit all of that <laughs> out because I didn't want people to lose respect for the the you know I think that we're really great women <laughs> that whole thing but I left it because we're going to be real and transparent but anyways I was born in 77 so was I five when that yes. movie came out okay which is based off what I told you in other episodes how my parents used to just watch movies with me so I did see it that time so it probably did scare me because I was five now yeah. I'm getting it because I have a six-year-old <laughs> that's, <laughs> why, that's why I was so terrified because I wouldn't let her watch this movie yeah, that would have been scary to see as a kid. Right? Like, I, mm -hmm. I, I for sure was like, this is, if I didn't know and I was a child and I was watching this, I would be totally freaked out. And by Terrified. the time he gets all the skin off and it's like the, the like, skull the and the stuff underneath, it's pretty gruesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty gruesome. So I was like, okay, yeah, it's rough. I thought the steak was silly, crawling like a worm. Yeah. But what I do remember is him biting the chicken spitting it out and there's maggots all over it that's disgusting i feel like they did that in another movie that i'm not remembering where the person was eating and they look down and it's maggots and that obviously bothers me a lot <laughs> i feel like that's happened probably multiple times yeah. but let me tell you a thing about the steak so the crawling steak was done by using a real steak which was laid over a slot cut between the tiles and the countertop two wires were fastened to the bottom of the steak and a special effects operator hidden under the counter simply moved the wires to make the steak look like it was crawling. Um, and it says a similar operation was done when Diane presents to Stephen the chairs that move across the room by themselves. A wire was fastened to one of the chair's legs under the set and an operator first wobbled the chair with the wire then dragged the chair across to the destination. I love that. And you know what? That actually makes me like it more. It's neat, kind of that when you know kind of what they went through that much trouble within the tile to make the steak move like that. It makes me like it more. And see, it's like it's it's silly, but again, because it's a practical effect, it's it's you can't help but be like, it's a little unsettling because yeah. obviously steaks don't move on their own like that. And so I I didn't mind that part, you know. And even the face like pulling off, like that's practical. Um, it's. I, I think I read that it's Steven Spielberg's hands who who is oh, wow. pulling off all the makeup and stuff. You can tell that it's fake, obviously, but it it looks pretty good. Whereas like the scene, I put this under my like not great <laughs> graphics is the when they go into the room and all the shits flying around. That was rough, rough. I was like, no. Like everything was nicely creepy. And then when you have like the things going in front of them going, ha, 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 and like, it's almost like Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. 
but it's that's a different movie you know what I mean like yeah it almost made it seem like um or not even Harry Potter uh what's that lady that spoonful of sugar um Mary Poppins sort of yes. vibe right it was kind of silly it made I it seem, first of all it made it seem like the spirit was silly and the spirit is very dark and feeding off children this is a very dark energy and it was like playful and silly totally that's uh, yeah and um I think maybe they had to silly it up I'm just hitting you with all this knowledge that I read that I didn't even put in these notes but they they I think originally had I think the original script or something had um Carol Ann dying like she died in the house or something and Ooh. like got stuck in there but they were like that's too dark and we're trying to get it to be they originally got an R rating and they wanted to bring it back down to like a PG and so the, I think they did some things and they they probably were trying to balance that like family film versus mm-hmm. scary whatever go R agree. or go PG yeah and I feel like now it's a different time. People know that they can make movie money on R-rated movies, but I think the time was different then, and it was trying to be kind of a family fun movie. But I agree that felt very silly, and it was like they blew all of their like computer graphics budget on that one scene, and it really it's hurts. Horrible. The movie now. Yeah, but it was horrible. I have another thing that I want to talk about just for the graphics that kind of relates it says the scene where diana is attacked in her bedroom should i keep going between the two Mm -hmm. things um they um by an invisible force it was actually filmed in a rotating box with a stationary camera so it gave the impression of her being like dragged up the wall i love that scene it was very well done very creepy it was it had a very unnatural like but practical feel to it so i really liked that part and again it was done practically so it's it stands the test of time and it's creepy you know oh I loved that scene yeah I um I must be really scared by people that crawl across the ceiling because that was in hereditary too (laughs) I couldn't let go of that (laughs) but yeah when she that you know it's scary too because how she really she didn't have any control and I loved how she was fighting with all of her might too right she wasn't just like oh no what was me she was like fighting and fighting and how it drugged her or dragged her all across and then how it kept stopping her to get her children like I could totally feel all of that like what would you do yeah I love that yeah I did too and it and it was very fat like I like how she like lays down on the bed and it like flips up her like dress and she's like what and it just happens like again I'm contradicting myself here but like once shit ramps up and gets crazy I'm ready for it to flip but I need like a I need like a warming up period for to to, for it to be suspenseful enough for me to be like oh no like that was a perfect scene for me because it's like all the way up until now you know we dealt with it we thought it's gone and then she's like laying down finally to take a rest and it like flips up her dress and she's like what pulls it down and immediately just gets like like wrangled up into the air and like thrown against the wall I was like this is great super creepy I agree I agree I love that scene um so let's see a couple more just like general notes the sound effect for the beast that attacks the house at the end of the movie is the source for the current MGM lion roar I got all my shit from IMDB by the way oh really I know it's almost like really because I feel like the lion's roar has been around for a long time but maybe they had an old sound effect and replaced it with this but neat um also let me just go ahead and read you this entire paragraph because I'm gonna I'm not exactly sure the other ones I feel like I can imagine like okay this is how you did it this one like I'm like a little unsure about it says the house that gets sucked into a black hole at the end was actually a model about four feet across the model took several weeks to complete The shot was arranged with the camera placed directly above the model, which was mounted over an industrial strength vacuum generator. So the front door was facing up directly at the camera. Um, The model also had about 100 wires attached to various points of the structure. These wires went down through the back of the house and through the vacuum collection sack. So the camera was turned on and took 15 seconds to wind up to the required 300 frames per second. The vacuum was turned on, the wires were yanked, and several um, special effects guys blasted the house with pump-action shotguns. 
the entire scene was over in about two seconds and they had to wait until the film was developed before they knew if they ha would have to do it again. Luckily, they got it right on the first take, which is like insane. Okay. <clears throat> that scene where the house implodes at the very end. It's great. That's a real house and or like model and they, all of that? It's a practice. It's again. Shut it's a practical effect. Up. I would have hold never up. guessed that. Yeah, it's, and it looked good. I was like, "Oh yeah, that was a good scene." I want to see it again now because of that. Yeah. Because that I thought that that was like CGI stuff. Like I thought that was, wow. I know that was a neat little tidbit. That is a good one. Holy crap. Um, here's my other, like, last random thing, because I love Zelda Rubenstein. It says, she was a medium and psychic in real life. This may have, uh, have had a lot to do with why she got the part in the first place. Oh, that's cool. And she had, like, weird experiences while shooting. I can't remember if I put them in here, but, like, one of them was, like, her dog had died, and she got, like, a really weird feeling or something, and then her... Um, mom called to tell her that the dog passed away and then I think on the on the set of the second or third movie I don't remember her mom passed and she like unexpectedly just like vomited like she was like ah. and then she was like somebody was like are you okay she was like yeah I think so and it was like the same time that her like mom passed there's a lot of I mean I don't know if we talk about it here because we might talk about it if we watch the other ones but um a lot of crazy stuff that happened to people and that carry oh. on and everybody around these these movie this movie series. I got some notes. We haven't even gotten to the cursed section of my notes, but that is next. So I don't know if I caught it all. So if you know more, definitely jump in. And also, That's I feel like I'm talking a lot because I did all the notes for this. So if you want to, no, not at all. I think we're good. Something came to my mind and I totally forgot it that I was going to mention about the about the movie um the sequels or something no not about the sequels about this one that we watched but i don't remember i can say one thing though it's kind of going back to the beginning ish section if a whole bunch of construction workers were in my yard and they were hitting on one of my teenage daughters i know i would have went out there and i would have laid down some law big time and, she, and she's just like <laughs> she's like literally at the at the again weird choice weird choice <laughs> yeah she does it all <laughs> She does it all except for flip them off. I was just like, yeah. okay, at this point, just just flip them off. Well, this, like, I, that's what that means. I mean, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Like, just if you really want to get your point across, I just. By the way, for everyone listening audio-wise audio on our YouTube channel, we did the whole thing. We did the whole oh, thing yeah. that she did. No, yeah, like, um, and that's cool that she stuck up for herself. I'm just saying as a mom because they specifically showed the mom watching this happen. Yeah, That's why and, I mention it. And she has a very like, <laughs> like boys will be boys, like reaction to it. And I was just, Jade was like, that's a child. I would <laughs> be livid. I would go out there and I, oh my gosh. I know. I don't, I don't even want to say what I would do because it's going to involve a lot of cursing and violence so but i would there was absolutely no way that's my teenage daughter she's under 18 well any i don't even care if my daughter's 30 but especially she's a child she's in high school yeah. and these guys catcalling her and doing all that sexually suggestive stuff while they're working on her and why the hell are they eating my chili I know through the like window two seconds later he reaches in through the window and like and then she's even like okay, you're funny. Give me my mug back. Bye. I was just like, no what? new crew. Like you're not working on my no. pool anymore. <laughs> I like how you were like, you were like no cursing. and Yeah, you're right. No cursing and violence on this podcast. None of that. No, I know. Right. <laughs> no, I was just going to go all off on, you know what, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And that on that note, silly. That's stupid. Before I continue on with these little fun facts, uh, mm -hmm. The, the daughter as a character in general, I was just like, served no purpose. I was very lost about why she was there. She almost hardly wasn't there, which is probably very true to a teenager's experience. I remember not being home a lot as a yeah. teenager. But then on top of that, she has like these very like weird lines. Like one of the lines, she said something about like, oh, I know that hotel. And I was like, <gasps> what? Yeah. Was just like, what was 
that supposed to And then to her be- mom said, "What? What? Excuse me?" She's like, but "Oh, nothing." They just gloss over it. It's it's very weird. I don't know. The whole Like why? Yes. Why is it important to have this teenage character who's sexually promiscuous obviously because she knows the hotel, that's what they were, you know, getting at. Yeah. Um she had hickeys all over her neck at the end. Like, but why? Like I'm oh, not I missed that bad, even. but yeah, when she got out of the car and she was screaming, she had like really big hickeys all over her neck. Weird. But why? Why was that an important element even to have? Why was it so important to have this sexually active teenager who like why? Yeah, it, it served no, no purpose to the story. It was very weird. Yeah, yeah, it was. I agree with you there. She didn't help in any way, she didn't contribute in any way, she didn't save the day, she didn't protect her siblings. She, she didn't help her parent there was she didn't have a role the thing didn't affect her at all like the spirit so like why was she even in the movie yeah and maybe there's like maybe there's an answer in the story the the written story or something but I, it just felt very like you could have taken her out entirely and it would have made zero difference to the movie anyway totally weird I agree with note. you I agree with you on that um, so in my cursed section, the first bullet point is that you probably already know this real human skeletons were used in the swimming pool scene since the crew decided it would be too complicated and too expensive to get fake ones, which blows my fucking mind. Yes. It says Joe Beth Williams, the mom was not made aware of this until after the scene was finished. So they didn't even tell her that she was swimming around with real corpses. And here's a little, um, this part I got from Snopes. It says spa- special effects makeup artist, because I had to look this up to just double check. Um, Craig Reardon, however, said under oath that the skeletons used for the scene were real. I acquired a number of actual biological surgical skeletons is what they're called. That was a weird sentence to read out loud. <laughs> they're for hanging in classrooms and study. They're, these are actual skeletons from people. I think the bones are acquired from India. That's fucked up. That's weird. But at any rate, we got 13 of these and we dressed them so that they looked not like bleached, clean, bolted together skeletons, but instead disintegrating cadavers and, you know, added sculptured rubber and things to them so that they would kind of have a dramatic, leering, spooky aspect and not be dull. Um, So... They were, because I was super curious about this. Like, I was like, where do you find actual skeletons? Apparently from like a medical supply type situation. Okay. Um, my teens, we actually had to pause the movie and talk about this. So uh, she looked it up. My, um, my daughter's girlfriend looked it up and told me this, that those were real. And she goes, isn't that like really... Um, what am I trying to say um, not sacrilegious, but uh, disrespectful to the person who had died that they're taking their bones and dressing them up with jewels and hair and putting them in this movie. And then I'm like, yeah, I wonder, cause I'm a donor. Like, does my donor mean you could use my bones? Can I say like, Hey, you can use my bones uh, in a movie. I'm totally cool with that. But she thought of it in a very different way. Like, is that kind of disrespectful to be doing that to like real bones or because where do you denote that that's okay? I'm, I'm okay. Like, the, Hey, universal Miramax legendary film, all the film companies out there. If I die, which I hope I don't tell I'm super, super old. If you want to use my bones, dress them up. Like that's cool. Um, but I wonder, like, where is that? As a donor, are you able? This is a side note, and yeah, I didn't totally. drink a martini, but I'm curious. Like, does that mean they can use your bones for that as well? That's a good question because it does. It does. It does make you wonder what. what where's the line between um, being a donor for yeah. people that maybe have injuries and need to, uh, you know? But like, I guess there's like a donating your body to science type of a thing. I don't know if that's encompassed in the same. And so would science be movies, motion pictures? <laughs> it's a good question. I don't know. That was just a side note, but that's cool. And I wonder if that woman was kind of upset. Like, why didn't you just tell me they were real? I know it really, um, I read a lot of like, I feel like problematic shit as a producer, like, you know, the, the main 
so I, I'm a pro- video producer at my day job, but don't hold that against me, listen. I'm not like, <laughs> I just like to talk about what I liked and didn't like. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I don't know about budget numbers. Okay, you guys, don't hold it against me, please. And I have a hard time with numbers and names. Um, I'm so glad you said that because I'm the same. I, d- yeah, I, d- I was even- at a director level. I am now with training, but at, for, as far as the, in like corporate America, you know, it, I, I hear that as you move up, it's just more and more numbers and less, less like the day to day. And the numbers are hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, sorry, uh, Tony interrupted you. No, you're good. But um don't hold that against me. That's all I'm saying. And um where was I going with that? Mm. I think oh, I was saying like just th- like you know, just being a producer, you you're like your job is to make sure people are safe and accounted for and stuff and there was like there was also, again, I didn't put the notes in here, so I might fuck up the details of this, but there was like the pool scene, right? And there was like mm-hmm. electronic type, like lights and stuff, I think, hanging over the pool. And oh, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. The woman, Jo Beth Williams, was like, I am nervous. I don't want to get in this pool because if this shit comes down, I'm getting electrocuted, right? Which is a totally reasonable fear to have. And in fact, what they should have done was minimize that completely. Like that should have not even been something that, that could have happened at the end dangling it's hanging I remember, I remember that specifically because I was like oh what's that light and I'm like oh it's just a light yeah and um I guess Steven Spielberg got in the water with her and said like hey this way if, if we you fry, die I die we fry together which again I'm like no that is not that's not the answer you just that's make sure not the answer no you just make sure no one gets hurt I don't yeah (laughs) no one dies I mean obviously you can't I feel like plan for every single little thing but you do as much as you possibly can to mitigate risk like that like that's a major you know bodily injury and so it is it is gross and weird that they didn't disclose that Mm -hmm. she would be swimming around with actual skeletons I don't like that at all and yeah, a lot of I, people are like, oh, this film is cursed because of that. <laughs> yeah, they should have told her. It would have made her more scared, I would imagine, anyways, knowing that they are real, but they should have told her. And they really didn't want to do it because they were being cheap. Because they could have gotten plastic um, skeletons, but it cost more. So really? For plastic? More than real human skeletons? That's at the crazy. time, I guess. Yeah. Stupid. Tawny Ray, you haven't taken one sip of your drink, and I'm done with mine. Bro, I'm about to be done with mine too. Can we then pause for a half a second, grab new drinks, and meet back here? I don't know if I have any more drinks. Let me go see if Jade drank all his because I'll take his. Okay, we're back. We're back, and we just have a discussion how I have a new martini and Tawny does not have a drink because they run out. (laughs) That's all right. We're going to stock up for next time. Yeah, I told you that's not acceptable. (laughs) It's like, <laughs> I'm kidding I'm, I'm kidding it's totally acceptable except if she wants a drink and it's not there it's not acceptable you know exactly I'm fulfilling my lifelong dream every time I listened to a podcast in the past and I heard people drinking I was like oh god I want to drink and do a podcast <laughs> you know what my so, most favorite thing is that drunk history oh I love that no. show oh my gosh it cracks me oh my gosh me? too i it's one of my favorite things to watch ever yes okay well we are back and uh i am drinking and tawny is no longer drinking so it's not going to be a drunk history but we have more stuff to talk about poltergeist yeah i know why i did that poltergeist (laughs) (laughs) that's creepy poltergeist um okay so i'll just jump back in with my little tidbits here i have joe beth williams again the mom had a supernatural experience during the making of the film. Whenever she came home from filming, the pictures on the walls of her house were crooked. Every time she fixed them, they would hang crooked again. Mm. Really? Creepy. And then this is what I was talking about earlier. Zelda Rubenstein also had an experience when a vision of her dog came to her and said goodbye. Hours later, her mother called her and told Rubenstein that her dog had passed away that very day. But she was a medium, so it wasn't because of the movie. 
because she was already like open to spirits and stuff true yeah right? that probably aided in some of that now let's get into some of these deaths because yeah a lot of people so died this is the same thing with me in previous episodes how I was I was like nervous to say the name of the thing like I would be called you know bringing that energy that's what I feel like you're making this movie and you're like inviting I don't know how it works but inviting this energy into it or is everyone just hyper nervous and creeped out because of it like for example when I watched Hereditary and now to the to this day when I open my eyes at night I purposely don't look <laughs> at the dark corners of my room it's like you know like just kind of in your head but go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah totally I I think that is it is possible that this movie is not cursed and it's just that there was such a creepy ambiance around it that everybody was just spooked and you know but maybe not but maybe not who knows not me (laughs) um okay so dominique dunn is the one who plays the daughter i hope you don't know this information because i'm so excited i don't know anything about the daughter Mm -mm. yes okay so dominique dunn total random side note Uh, apparently went to Fountain Valley School in Fountain, Colorado, which is not going to be the last time that I mention Colorado, which is where I grew up. Oh. Which is so weird. Snippity snap, Tawny. I know. (laughs) I grew up in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Fountain is, like, real close. Like, it's, like, pretty much Colorado Springs. I mean, at the time, maybe it was a little bit more separated, but you know how there's, like, the sprawl and it touches? My dad, um... Again, there's like Fountain and then there's Widefield, which is like very close to Fountain. Um, and my dad grew up or or I grew up going to my dad's in Widefield. And so like, you know, anyway, it just feels like a, a neat little weird connection. Yes, that's awesome. So there she was. Um, here's but she died like very soon after she was murdered. Oh, she died? She's she murdered? Was, she was murdered. So check this out. Dunn was strangled by her ex-boyfriend, John Thomas Sweeney, in the driveway of her West Hollywood home and went into a coma. She never regained consciousness and died five days later. In a controversial court case, Sweeney was convicted of voluntary manslaughter in Dunn's Dunn. I keep saying Dunn, but it is Dunn. Dunn's death and served three and a half years in prison when his original sentence was like six years. So... Dominique's how done. do you manslaughter how do you strangle somebody and that's manslaughter I don't even because, understand yeah I again don't agree with this no 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 um I I think he obviously got off super fucking easy three years yeah you took that girl's life holy shit but he claimed and his lawyer claimed that it was like a fit of passion like it was like he didn't mean to kill her. There was no like premeditation. He, okay, I should have put this in the notes, but I didn't. Um, but I'll try to recount the story as best as I can. So I might fuck up some details, but um, she, they had like a tumultuous relationship and there was some like abuse in the past and she was trying to leave him mm-hmm. and her family was like, okay, great. She was like in a house. I think she had kicked him out, changed the locks, something. And she was actually practicing lines with a new actor. And he came over to the house and was like, come out and talk to me. And so the guy stayed inside and, you know, was just like, probably I'm not going to get involved or whatever. And she went out front to talk to him and it just like escalated from there. And he ended up like strangling her. And he eventually, the guy inside the house who was like, you know, practicing lines ran outside after a little while and saw him like kneeling over her and called and and this guy Sweeney told him to call the cops because he like he claims that he blacked out and didn't realize what he was doing tough buddy Uh, yeah and um choked her and then like sort of realized what was happening and the, the police got there and he was there like he didn't run he you know admitted to them like I killed her and so 
the thing is, the thing that got fucked up, though, is in the process of testimony, they had one of his ex-girlfriends come in and testify that he was, like, abusive towards her, but it didn't make it to the jury. The judge, <sighs> like, threw it out from <sighs> whatever it's called. Like, it was inadmissible or for some reason. And so the jury, um, like, I don't know exactly how all of this works, but they decided on it being manslaughter instead of oh, like okay murder so i've been in an abusive relationship before and talked to a lot of people that have been in abusive relationships and i i would think that any abusive relationship you were in if that was to happen you could say it was a fit of passion or a fit of rage of course right. that's what you're in but that is oh, the fact that is three years is nothing this girl is gone. I'm totally tangenting right now. Tangenting, but whatever. This girl is gone and he went for three years and now he's out with his anger issues and his bullshit. Oh my gosh. The fact that if anyone killed anyone with their bare hands, like, I'm sorry. If my husband, God forbid for him, I'm just kidding, <laughs> was cheating on me. <laughs> But was cheating on me, right? And I walked in and I was so angry. Like my, it was, you're, you would laugh too because my 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 husband's very <laughs> giant. He's like six yeah. something. But I strangled him to death because I was so mad he was cheating on me. That would be a fit of rage and passion, totally. And I deserve, like the maximus. I took his life. Like yeah. that's not okay. Anyways, this is a side note. I'm sure, like anybody who disagrees, like I can't imagine it's fine. Like whatever. Like no, lot. it's fucked. It's That's fucked. crazy. I feel so sad for her. You can't say that she was a bad actress now. I feel bad for, I know. for teasing her scene. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. You should have started with that. <laughs> but it, but it's still the truth. But this no, is an wow. awful thing that happened. That's awful. Wow. To her and her family. And um, That's the crazy. So check this out. Her father is Dominic Dunn from. Dominic Dunn's Power, Privilege, and Justice, which was on Court TV. I don't even, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. I, I thought you would know what, what I'm talking about. about. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're fine. But I, like, this was like a major show on um, Court TV that then became True TV, I think. And again, we, we have talked about this probably not on air, but we both are like um, super into true crime. And my oh, grandmother yeah. used to watch like time. trials and crime stuff, like when I was a little kid, and it used to like, obviously scared the shit out of me and obviously left a lasting effect here but um so he had a show and so let me read you this little blur blurb it says yeah, yeah. dominic dunn after the 1982 murder of his daughter dominique he came to focus on the ways in which wealth and high society interacts with the judicial system a frequent contributor to vanity fair dunn also appeared regularly on television discussing crime from the 1980s to the end of his life so he was like a major contributor to the like true crime area. And I think her mother also um, started a, an organization or something, but he like stalked this guy. He was pissed. The whole family was pissed, obviously, because this guy got off like super easy. And he yeah. like, he yelled something at the end of the trial. Like he was like, justice has not been done for our family today. And he stalked this guy, like with, with the help, of, he hired a private investigator and for like years he stalked this guy. And there was somebody else who like, oh, another woman who met him and almost married him. And the private eye, like, I guess got like wind of this and told them, the family. And so I think she had a brother. He called up this person and was like the woman who was going to marry him and be like, just so you know, like this guy murdered my sister and he has like a history of domestic violence. Good. And so this guy eventually was like, he changed his name. He moved and changed his name so that they would stop harassing him. And eventually Dominic Dunn was like, I'm not going to like keep this up to the end of my days. It's right. too much, you know, like whatever. I'm not, I'm going to stop doing it. But yeah, it's not like, it's, it's an interesting like tie back around because she got murdered Dominic Dunn then as a result of that was more involved in like the true crime like thing it just was like an interesting that was so interesting loop that's I'm so sorry for her and her family and that mm. 
it's mm. it's obviously terrible oh and the judge got like a shit ton of blowback like people were fucking pissed at this judge because he um you know is the one who ultimately said like the previous girlfriend's thing was in- inadmissible or whatever the situation was and so he's always maintained that the it was like he kind of puts it on the jury like he's like oh the jury said that this was i think they should have said murder but the jury's like if we had had all the fucking information we would have convicted that motherfucker of murder i always feel like i don't ever want to be in a jury and i hope people don't hate me for that but only because i'm so nervous to make a decision knowing i don't have all the info Mm -hmm. knowing for a fact that more than likely I don't have all the info and I never want to convict someone or, or not convict someone and walk away and hear all the info and then go, Oh my God, what did I do? Yeah. It's, it's so scary. And that yeah. just from watching true crime documentaries or court cases, you can see that they leave out a ton of information for the jury, right? Like that's part of the process it's totally fucked this is a total side note but one day you and i i would i always dreamed of like getting a case like a cold case and fully investigating it to the nines like i'm obsessed with those i'm not a journalist but um and i think the the people that do those shows are phenomenal i love those shows we should totally do that I do get super interested in certain cases where it's like, oh God, you just want to know, like you want to- Maybe like with a journalist, right? So, you know, like, I don't know. I would love to do that. But anyway, sign up. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, totally weird. Yeah. True crime, tie-in, whatever. Here we go on to our second death of this movie. Is Heather O'Rourke. This might, I don't know if we're going to have to split this up into two episodes. I don't know. This is going to be a big one. I told you. It's a long- so much information about and this movie. Re- Tawny, please remind the audience, who's Heather O'Rourke? Heather O'Rourke is, thank you, Felicia, uh, the daughter, Carol Ann. So the little yeah. girl. All right. So I might know this, but I might not. So go right uh, ahead. Yeah. So Heather O'Rourke uh, died in 1988 at age 12 from cardiac arrest caused by septic shock from a bowel obstruction caused by intestinal stenosis. I don't even know if I'm saying any of these words right. After being (laughs) misdiagnosed with Crohn's disease in 1987. Yeah. Excuse me. In one of the later movies, um, you can tell it's just different. She's very swollen. Oh. And she's right. Yeah. In, I remember that in the movie progression and in that last one, when she died, she just looked different. She's just like very swollen and very like, she looked like she was sick. Unwell. That. Mm-hmm. Unwell. Interesting. Yes. Unwell. I know that's very, that's a very sad one. Cause she was very young and yeah. it seems like a baby girl, like avoidable thing, but yeah. Yeah. So the last one that I'll talk about is, um, and I I think I'm missing some, I think other people died, but I'm just, I tried to keep it at the first movie. I kept her in there, even though she died during like, I think the third movie, but um, I tried to keep it at the first movie. So the last one that I'll talk about is Lou Perryman, who played, what did it say? Pugsy. I could not though, for the life of me, I could not find a fucking picture of who this person is. Like, I was like pretty mad. I think it's one of the construction workers, but it's not the one who like- You guys know how I feel about those motherfucking (laughs) construction workers. Not construction workers in general, but in this movie. (laughs) Yeah. It's not the one that eats the chili and like leans into the house. I can't, I couldn't figure, I could not find a picture of him. But anyway- I'm looking. I'm just looking. I'm curious. But go, yeah, go. see if you can find it. But he was also in um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and maybe Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Um, I don't know who he was in there, but it says Perryman was also fucking murdered. Did you know this? <gasps> no, I just saw it on my phone. <laughs> it said the murder. <laughs> Quit looking it up. The Quit murder. looking it up. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> the murder of Lou Perryman. I'm sorry. Okay, go. <laughs> Okay. He was killed in his home in Austin, Texas on April 1st, 2009 by a 26-year-old man named Seth Tatum. 
Tatum, who had recently been released from prison for aggravated robbery, had gone off his medications and had been drinking. He later confessed that he had killed Perryman with an axe. He straight murdered that motherfucker with an axe. Can you believe it? He was 67 when he died. It says... He was a 67-year-old man, and he was murdered with an axe by this convict that just got... It seems like totally random. Like I couldn't really find a lot of information about this murder, but it says on June 26, 2009, Tatum was indicted on two counts of capital murder. Tatum pleaded guilty to murder and was convicted on February 1st, 2011. Oops, sorry. That's my dog shaking. That's your dog shaking. It's great. Um, He was sentenced to life in prison. Isn't that interesting? So the other guy got like three years and this motherfucker got sent Okay. to prison for life and they they said he said oh, later shit. that he like he doesn't remember like again it's like oh i blacked out that memory bullshit you need to f- oh, it's making my me- brain i don't know just shuts off to sometimes but you know, it says uh- <laughs> he i guess he was like oh i think i i wanted his car because he had like a nice car totally random seemingly senseless Okay, so Lou Perryman uh, is this guy. So I wonder if he is the Caucasian paranormal dude that came in. I think that guy's name is Marty. But look, that's Lou Perryman. Maybe. Okay, I couldn't know. It's very weird, though, that we can't find. So that guy was in Boys Don't Cry, too. Yeah. Um, It's weird, though, that we can't just see oh, this is Poltergeist, and this is Lou Perryman. You know I know. I, mean? I tried to look him up on IMDb just to get a picture of him, because I was like, I can probably deduce what person he is from his picture, but I couldn't even find a picture of him. Okay, so I'm going to move on to, <laughs> again, this is my second mention of Colorado, where I'm from. Um, I moved to Denver to go to college uh, and lived there for about nine years before I moved here to Idaho, And so here's the story that was the inspiration for this movie. It says, the inspiration for the movie um, comes from an actual occurrence in Denver, Colorado. In the late 1800s, when Denver was expanding, there was a graveyard where the city government wanted to put in a grand city park like the one in New York. Um, Let's see, Central Park, obviously. The city put out notices for bids to relocate the cemetery and decided to go with the lowest bidder. Never a good option, y'all. Uh, <laughs> about a third of the way into the project, the contractor realized that he had seriously underbid the job and, long story short, started moving just the headstones. Saw that coming. He completed the job and the city started building the slated sculpt- or structure and were actually getting close to finishing when one of the contractor's employees spilled the beans. The contractor was arrested, but the damage was done. The city, not being able to afford the teardown, um, afford to dare, to, oh my God. I'm going to stop trying to put this much shit to read. <laughs> <laughs> being able to afford to tear down the building and dig up the cemetery again, left it as is, as was, and just finished the project, <laughs> leaving the unmarked, well, and it still is, leaving the unmarked graves as they were. The park is named Cheeseman Park, and the graves sit under the Greek pavilion on the east side of the park and extend south to 8th Avenue. So, if you're in Denver, you know people talk about Cheeseman Park being haunted all the fucking time. And I had never known that this was, like, connected to Poltergeist in any way, but isn't that fucked? So that Cheeseman Park, when you go there, there's those. There's no bodies. There, there still are bodies under the shit. They just, yeah, they just. I, I, I That's tried to read. Crazy. This is where I really started to get lost in the research. Like I was like, oh my god, it's hard to like verify and know what's real. But it sounds like they had this contractor, you know, who mm-hmm. underbid and just started moving headstones instead of bodies and so there was like just open fucking like graves for a long time and then the city fired him and we're like we don't have the money to fix it so that's crazy it is crazy and you're I was coming just, with some really good shit dude i'm telling on you this I, episode 
the research I did hope, not stop. I'm not going to say what we're doing next until the end, but the movie we chose, I better have some good research, Tawny. Uh, I don't know if you can't. The, this Damn one is it. a special case, dude, because it's so, there's so much lore and so much like intrigue and, and mysterious things happening, murders deaths there's like a thousand other deaths i didn't even talk about just because they were from like natural causes that people think that it aids to this curse and then on top of all that you know like i just was like it never ends there's so much to this movie and so the last note that i'll say is just that again i kind of went down a rabbit hole i thought i had seen like a thousand thousand parodies of this movie like in pop culture type things when i was watching cartoons and things when I was growing up but I could really only find one so if you know if you know of any please jump into our Facebook group and tell us about it because I want to know but the only one that I could find was the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episode I think it's one of the first Treehouse of Horror episodes that they did and there's a segment called the Bad Dream House and I remember watching this as a kid again super into the creepy versions of everything so I loved the Treehouse of Horror episodes and it's it's kind of a parody of Poltergeist in the way that the house like implodes on itself at the end because it doesn't want to live with them (laughs) it's like hmm live with the Simpsons or what other option do I have and it like implodes (laughs) I don't think I saw that it's it's again I love it because I watched it as a kid so I have like a nostalgia thing to it um, and I remember it sort of scaring me, like it was a little creepy, but it's also like a parody at the same time of the Amityville horror movie. Um, that's not the right name. Is that the right name? The Amityville? Amityville horror? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I mixed up. a true story. I, yeah, which is a whole other discussion that we'll probably have at some point. I'll add it to the list. Oh, yeah. Um, But anyway, so it pulls in a few of those uh, like inspirational type things into this one segment. But I swear, I felt like I watched, you might, you might have missed this, Felicia, but there was a show called Courage the Cowardly Dog. And it was like for teens and or for kids. And they did like parodies of other horror things. Like they definitely did one that was uh, like The Exorcist. But, and I swear I watched one that was like Poltergeist, but I I couldn't find it today so if you know of any other ones let us know I want to know and I want to look them up because I feel like this movie I didn't love it but what I do like about this movie is that the underlying thing that's happening is creepy like you're dealing with moving like you're dealing with up uprooting headstones but not bodies and disturbing the dead which then obviously affects you because you're living and they're haunting you and they're disturbed and it's like fucked and then the whole thing imploding I feel like those couple of things really like sum up poltergeist so yeah I'm smiling so big because I love how you said you're disturbing the dead so obviously they're gonna haunt you (laughs) I just I loved that I love that yeah haven't you seen any movies there's consequences for uprooting the dead (laughs) like come on (laughs) that was the moral of the movie in case you didn't get it (laughs) I love I love it I love it god okay I'm sorry I talked so much but there was don't be sorry that was so good there was so much good in that wait I don't want people to hate me there wasn't so much good in that there was a lot of sadness I'm just saying it was a lot of good facts and tidbits and information it was meaty we had a lot it was to go meaty over. yeah 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 meaty. i'm always worried about offending people but just know hands down it's never my intention yeah we're we're never um <laughs> never we're never condoning uh <laughs> spousal abuse no. or murder no or anything or, bad uh putting houses on dead people so talking about our next episode, um, we this time decided not while we were recording, but I do want to throw a curveball at you, Felicia, because maybe after watching all of this, it's like, maybe we watch the next Poltergeist or we go with the one that I chose. 
and also let me say we we also um decided off uh air air while we were not recording last time that what we're gonna try to do in a lot of situations is go around and do like one that felicia has seen but i have not and then the next one like one that i have seen that she has not so the next one would be an a movie that i have seen that felicia has not however because we're on a roll with this poltergeist thing do we watch the second one do we watch the remake maybe watching the descent and returning to poltergeist um so that people who love poltergeist have something to look forward to people who didn't like poltergeist um has a have a break okay what do you think is that good Okay, cool. So we'll watch The Descent. The Descent, what was the year? Just so, I don't know if there's multiple or is there only one? Don't put me on the spot. There is a sequel. Totally Um, not putting you on the spot. We're going to look it up so people know which one they're they're watching. uh, 2005. 2005, The Descent is what we're going to watch. I'm going to do the research for that. And there's probably nothing. Thank you. I'm just joking. (laughs) kidding tawny needs to stock up her liquor cabinet if she doesn't want to drink that's totally fine she can drink water but whatever she's probably gonna want to drink whiskey and um that's that's great yay i'm so excited I'm so excited too another one in the books so i'm not gonna go over all of our social media i'm just gonna say follow us on at two chicks in a horror flick at on everywhere. instagram everywhere yep. true but what i do want to drill home is join our group yeah. Right. I'm actually going to p- post it to um, later this evening. Like, Hey guys, the group is here because just like for anybody who's interested in horror, I know we're uh, a unique and special and highly evolved group of people. In my opinion, <laughs> not like me and Tommy <laughs> only people who love horror, people who love scary movies. Like it, it seems I get it, either they love it or they, they're like, Oh God, no, not me. Um, so all of us people who are like, yes, 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 we love it. Let's join, join forces together and, and have the conversation and discuss and share and nerd out on this fantastic shit. I'm so excited. I love it. I am so excited too. Thank you, Tawny. I absolutely heart you hardcore. I love Tawny. She is so fun. She is so funny. I love recording these episodes with her. This is like the highlight of my week. I think it's awesome. I know Tawny mentioned when quarantine's over, maybe we'll have to move our recording sessions because she might want to go do like, you know, go out and do date shit Actual and stuff things. on Friday. But this is like the highlight of my week. Me too. The end of my week, I'm getting together with you and we're talking about this for the for all of our listeners and I love it. Yes, I love it too. All right, you guys, we will see you next time. Remember, it's The Descent. Join the Facebook group, talk to us and let's let's do this. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night. No nightmares. No. Don't look under your bed. 